Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes at the Waltons. Today, I am answering more of your questions in another segment of Ask Judy. This question is from Rhea Dance. Um, I would imagine in regards to master shots, they were time consuming to set up and something so big versus just a couple of people. Because if someone messes up in the master shot, it's got to be a bear to go back and set everything up over and over again. I would imagine that's generally more time consuming as there's so much going on and then you have to worry about continuity. And what comes to mind is the old Western scenes where you get a moving shot of people coming and going down the center of rows of buildings and people are doing things on these sets too. Horses coming and going and then you have to reset. So yes, you are absolutely correct that depending on how complicated a master shot is will determine you know, how much has to be reset. Um, if it's like a big gathering outside the Walton house where we were putting together, we were having a celebration, uh, say Aaron's graduation or something like that. So they have an initial master shot that might show some mingling of people going through the crowd and everybody has their first marks and that would be called number one, you know, so that might be back to one, back to one, would mean go back to your starting position for the beginning of the scene before they call action, where were you? And then you might have a second mark or a third or depending on how you moved around. So if they wanted to do it again, it would be back to one. That meant the camera went back to the first position and all of the actors did. So where it's just kind of people, it's not that big a deal to reset people move back uh, for like in the kitchen, the kitchen scenes where we had to reset food, you know, that might be more work. Okay, scrape off all the plates, clean them, you know, bring in new clean plates if it's the beginning of a, of a meal. If it's mid-meal, then we might not need to clear all the plates. Um, so yeah, it was more complicated there to get that opening first shot. And then each time you went to do a close-up again, you had to, if you could see the plates and they were clean, then you had to keep changing that plate and making it clean again or what food was on the plate. Um, when you have, yes, um, a big sort of action sequence where a lot of things are going to happen, then yeah, definitely much more to have to go back and reset. Um, the closer stuff, usually not so much. But if you, you know, if it involves a lot of action, even in the smaller scene, then it can be more work technically to get. If the cameras moved a bunch and it had to get people in certain positions, camera doesn't move to here and then pick up this person and then move on and get, and get that. So all of that, everything has to be in focus. The timing has to be there. So those can get more complicated to do, definitely. I had another question in um, along the lines of this about master shots and things like that, where someone asked, could I show an example? with um, of like a master shot and how this kind of went together. So um, as I was speaking about the episode, the career girl and that gathering outside the house when Aaron has graduated, I thought I'd use that as an example. So as you see, the camera starts off on a bit of a tighter gathering here and then it starts to pull back. So that would have been a crane shot. They would have had a crane and they would have done that. And now we see people milling about. Then the next thing we see, a tighter shot. So this would have been shot separately where they go in and you're now on a tighter shot of Michael, of Olivia, as she speaks with you know, Mrs. Brimmer. And now the camera follows her. And now we've cut to another shot where Aaron is greeting people. So this would have been a separate shot. Grandpa comes out. So this is a two shot. So now we've gone to a tighter two shot. Um, this is kind of an over the shoulder, kind of over Mary onto Grandpa and showing a tighter shot of him. Now we've turned it around and we're on a shot of Aaron. So each of these would have been shot separately. Um, but when they went on to Mary, they would have stayed on Mary for everything that she was involved in in the scene. And then we have some cutaways to parts of the, the crowd and things like that. The, the cutaways are designed to be able to edit. So if they want to get out of something, then they go and they show something else. So overall, that's the way that sort of a scene was put together, where all of those different pieces uh, were shot each as its own piece. And then they edit it all together following the script 
and what were the shots that they needed for each of that. We never went back to that big master at the beginning, but each time they needed to do that camera pull back on the crane and stuff, they would have taken everybody back to those first positions and they would have said action and they would have gone through everything on the scene until they yelled cut. How much, they probably would have just done the beginning section until they started going in tighter because they didn't need all of that. Who knows? It depends on what the director thought he might use in the edit. This question is from Christine Wilson, who said, um, my question is about scripts. I recently purchased a couple of scripts from um, the Bed and Breakfast. Could you explain about the different colors of pages, what they mean, and do you know about how many rewrites and scripts in the series there were? Lots of rewrites, because we don't, we don't know how many rewrites happened before we saw the initial script. So there would have been all kinds of rewrites that went on before the sort of final shooting draft was given to us. And then from there, that's when page colors start changing. They're in a sequence of colors. So that's how we would know which pages were the most recent. So um, you would have, first of all, have your original draft, your final draft, which was usually the first script was white. Um, and then there would be somewhere around four to six sets of revisions, maybe more, you know, if it was, if there were a lot of rewrites, but since we only filmed for uh, six and a half days, usually you wouldn't have more than, you know, one set of revisions per day that would come down that would impact that day. And as there were fewer days to film, fewer scenes, fewer re revisions would come down. So there's a sequence, uh, and it is first white, then blue, then pink, yellow, green, goldenrod, buff, salmon, and cherry were the ones that um, that I was able to look up. So you, know, you get your first script and then blue pages come down. So you go through your script and you pull, you swap out your blue pages for whatever pages were white. And then, you know, pink ones come down and so, you know, you, you put those in. So if you had several sets of revisions you hadn't put in your script, you would know by the color which ones took precedence um, over it. So sometimes with a lot of revisions in a script, you would end up with a really sort of rainbow looking script of blue pages and pink pages and yellow pages and green pages and, and all of that sort of thing. So when you went to a scene and it was being filmed, everybody's reference was whichever was the latest revision. And they did have dates on the top of the pages of the revision. So you did know you could also take a look at it by the dates if you weren't sure about the color sequences. But sometimes there was, yeah, we're in yellow pages here. So it would go in that way. Keanu Girl asked this question. Judy, I was wondering if you could give your younger self advice, what would it be? Um, I think it depends on the topic we're talking about. Um, I think one of the things that... Um, I wish I'd known more um, about the, the business. And I think that uh, some of the advice I would have given myself and which I would give to other actors out there um, if you get going, like if you're doing something like a series, I feel like I should have had a press agent right from the beginning who was really there to focus on uh, promoting me uh, because my character was hugely popular right from the beginning. I got this second amount, second most fan mail to John Boy, to Richard Thomas. So um, had I had a dedicated press agent, there's a lot of other things and ways in which um, I could have potentially had other work opportunities or um, you know, done more, you know, maybe some of the nighttime talk shows early on when if, you know, if I'd had somebody pushing me, there was a press agent for CBS uh, who kind of promoted all of the characters, but they weren't necessarily there to really uh, promote me in particular. So that, and then I think, you know, there was a lot of, you do a lot of silly things when you're young. And I, I think maybe some of my advice was not to, some of the things was like, don't do that. You know, <laughs> what it was, you know, how silly it was, who knows, but um, yeah, and maybe, not to get so caught up in things. Uh, you know, when we're young, we can we can get involved in a lot of sort of life drama or things like that. So I think it would have been maybe to just 
have a different perspective on certain aspects of life that were, you know, like that where I could have had um, a better view. I, I felt like I, I don't know that it's unusual, but I felt very sort of self-focused. Um, and so perhaps maybe feeling like to try and be more aware of other people and what was what else was going on around me. I think I would have definitely given myself the advice to learn from the people I was working with and ask more questions of some of these amazing guest stars that we had, um, the people like, you know, Beulah Bondi or Jean Marsh, um, or even like the Mary and Helen who played the Baldwin sisters, uh, you know, Ellen Corby, Will Gear, to learn more about what they knew from life and working in the industry for so many years. Just the directors that we worked with, you know, just to just to learn more and ask more questions. There was this amazing history around me that I just didn't didn't know or didn't think to ask about. So interesting question. <laughs> Thank you for all of your questions in this segment of Ask Judy. Um, if you are enjoying these, please do hit like and subscribe. I'll be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more of your questions in another Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.